Welcome to Puro Politics, the political podcast of the San Antonio Express News. My name is Gilbert Garcia, Metro columnist, and I'm joined by Greg Jefferson, Metro editor. Nancy Prayer Donson, deputy editorial board editor. Uh, early voting in San Antonio uh, starts this week, and uh, before we're done today, we're going to talk uh, about uh, some of the uh, the advertising that's happening in the city election. But I want to start with um, some news that we uh, that we had last week on the 2024 U.S. Senate race in Texas. Uh, Ted Cruz is going to be uh, seeking his third term. And uh, last week we had a story about um, Texas Senator Roland Gutierrez, San Antonio Democrat. Uh, the the word is that I mean he's he's almost certain to run. I mean he's 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 planning for a, a camp 2024 uh, U.S. Senate campaign. I mean there's always a possibility. Uh, that you know he could change his mind, but uh, everyone around him uh, says this is this is almost certain to happen. And uh, Greg, I want to start with you. I mean, we we know that in, in Ted Cruz is a divisive figure. In 2018, uh, Beto O'Rourke got within I think 2.6 percentage points of beating him. That's about as close as uh, statewide elections in Texas mm-hmm. uh, have been in in recent memory. Um, but Roland Gutierrez, I mean, what are what are what are his challenges? What are what are you know? So, so what does Roland Gutierrez know that every other Democrat doesn't know? Right, including uh, Beto O'Rourke. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, look, I I think um, even even if you take his candidacy as a certainty, like there's he's not going to win against Cruz, and I don't I don't know that that's the point necessarily. I mean, I don't know that he actually believes he could. I think uh, Roland Gutierrez is a different politician from what he was, you know, from who he was a year ago. I think he was uh, kind of changed by the mass shooting in Uvalde on May 24th. And I think this is kind of an outgrowth of that. I think uh, it it just seems to me without, you know, Mm -hmm. obviously, I don't know what his, Mm -hmm. you know, what's going on in his heart of hearts. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if what he's trying to do is bring you know um, bring his message of sane gun control mm-hmm. to a, to a statewide audience, um, and to really put a, a you know um, an exclamation point on what he's been saying over the last year. Um, I, I would guess that has at least something to do with it. Yeah. What do you think, Nancy? I think so. I mean, I've talked with Roland several times since um, since the shooting. Every time I talk to him and every time I actually see him talking at the Capitol on live streams, on his Facebook, I can feel the emotion. I can feel his heart in it. Um, he wants to make a difference. Um, I mean... He hasn't been able to get anything done, right? Anything of significance done because of the state of Texas politics, Mm though. So we have to be real about that. Um, Recently, when Gary Patterson, who is the interim superintendent of Uvalde uh, School District, came to meet with our editorial board, we we talked with him for about three hours. So um, something during that meeting that that he said really struck me, and and it's unfortunately true. He said at one point he was describing a meeting with some high school students about uh, another way to go and instead of walkouts, maybe they could have a walk in. Mm-hmm. So he's like talking to them and he says, you know, I could bring lawmakers and elected officials here to you, you know, and he's really trying to help them speak out, but in a, you know, safe environment. And so as he was telling us about that, he said, you know, I have as much pull as Roland Gutierrez in the Capitol, and that's not anything or something, yeah. you know, not yeah. to direct quote him, but it was really telling. And, and it's something we all know. And, and it's sad, right? Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. I think, you know, personally, I feel Roland is is doing what he can for the families. They are, um, many of them are aligned with him. They're often, you know, he's usually flanked with them when he's um, at his press conferences right. um, at the Capitol, and, um, and he's fighting for them, but no one listening. And so I don't have a lot of hope for him. I mean, hopefully um, something could happen, but it just it doesn't look look like it's something that could happen in our, the state of Texas politics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, Roland is uh, I'm not surprised by this because I, I covered Roland Gutierrez when he was first running for city council in the early aughts. I mean, he's just he's just kind of a combative personality. So um you know he's he's kind of hit a brick wall in the legislature this year. Um, I think it's you know I, I think it it angers him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he feels you know kind of impotent, and he wants to do something for these families. Yeah. 
Uh, so this is kind of born out of frustration, but it's it's also kind of who he is. I mean, yeah. he'll he he you know he's more than happy to take the fight to you. Absolutely, so, yeah. and uh, you know one of the things that is that I think he sees, even though uh, you know his big fight has been uh, you know with the, at the state capitol. Um, and Cruz is obviously based in, in D.C., that he sees Cruz as emblematic of this Republican monopoly on Texas politics, which, I mean, I, the, the argument that 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 I, I know he's going to put forward if he runs is going to be that this we've been sold this Texas miracle, this Texas ec- economic miracle, but really the, the state has done a, a very poor job on a lot of the key issues, whether it's been gun safety, whether it's been education, infrastructure, the the power grid, and so on. So, I mean, that's, that's what he's going to need. He is combative. He will, I think he would, you know, certainly take the fight to Cruz if he, if he made if he made it to a general election. A couple of things are that are interesting. Um, I mean, he's got certainly got a name recognition challenge. Mm-hmm. Uh, Beto O'Rourke was not mm-hmm. that well known statewide. Mm-hmm. I think really until his big uh, ride with uh, Will Hurd, just mm-hmm. right about the time he he got into the race in, in twenty eighteen. Um, but Beto O'Rourke had unique, you know, u- uh, sort of a unique charisma and unique ability to sort of attract media attention. He was certainly a, a fundraising powerhouse, which I, I think that's going to be a challenge for uh, for Roland Gutierrez. Um, but one thing that, that I think is is uh, interesting about his situation is that he's not going to be up for re-election until 2026. So, you know, the other people who've t- been talked about, I mean, Colin Allred uh, from uh, the Rep- Dallas congressman is, is the person who's really been talked about as a potential uh, Senate candidate in 2024, he's going to have to give up his seat. I mean, this is the same situation that, that Joaquin Castro was in when he thought about running against Ted Cruz, that, you know, it's a lot to give up. Roland Gutierrez, aside from just the time commitment, he's probably going to be away from his family for a, yeah, yeah. for many, you know, for a year or something. But but as far as the, it, the political cost is really, there really is going to be, I mean, he's going to raise his, his profile right. sta- statewide, probably nationally. And um, he's He's not going to have to give up his seat at all, right? 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 I mean, but let's 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 be you know let, let's be kind of down to earth about this. I mean, if if Gutierrez d- does get in the race, mm-hmm. he's gonna you know he's gonna he almost certainly <laughs> won't raise anywhere close to what Beto O'Rourke that's raised. Not, that's be a does problem. not have his uh, name ID. Doesn't have his profile. He's going to really struggle uh, just just to make himself known to kind of the average Texas voter. And I think what's as likely to happen as not is Ted Cruz just, you know, Rowan may take the fight to him, but he may refuse to accept it. <laughs> just say, I will not be served. So I'm not going to, you know, just, just kind of ignore him. You know? be- before we leave this topic, I, I, you know, clearly in 2018, Cruz was uh, – Particularly vulnerable, he had come out of a 2016 presidential race, um, where I, and I think a lot of even some Republicans looked and thought this guy came into office in the Senate. Two and a half years later, he's declaring for the presidency. He had he's just this office was just a stepping stone for him. He had no interest in the in the Senate aside from just you know getting you know grandstanding to get attention for himself. And then he alienated some Republicans because he was slow to endorse Trump. Um, and he though he came around and became one of his biggest. Supporters, um, there was still by tw- in twenty eighteen there was there were still raw feelings in the Republican Party. About it. So he had he had some fences to men on the Republican side. Clearly, Democrats hated him. Since then, he's had a couple of rough moments. In January twenty twenty one, he was pushing to uh, for Congress to uh, n- to not certify the twenty twenty election results, which that might have helped him with the Republicans, but probably. You know, uh, uh, like with, nobody else. With, with, <laughs> nobody else. <laughs> and then a month after that, he infamously uh, took off to, for a Cancun getaway <laughs> at, at, when Texas was going through a horrific, uh, 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 you know, power outage. Which and, he's and still freeze. making jokes. About. He's, he's, still, he's, he's trying to. Day. He's well, trying so to. Everybody else. Right? He's trying <laughs> to like sort of take ownership of it. <laughs> like, oh my god. So I guess my question is, in light of the the Cancun thing and the and the the election denial thing, is he? More vulnerable now, or is he less vulnerable than he was I in think 2018? I, undoubtedly, he's less vulnerable. Yeah, I think. I think so too. Yeah, even even with the uh, the trip to Cancun, I mean, you know, I think, yeah. and I just think the fact right. that he every at every CPAC, <laughs> he's making a little joke about it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. trying to take yeah. the venom out of it. Uh, no, I mean, I see no reason to to think that he's he's really in danger. Yeah, in which is frustrating. Yeah. It's it's frustrating that Texas Texas voters aren't 
more frustrated with what's going on, with the lack of change, um, with the lack of common sense gun reform. I mean, this is, you know, everything Roland is saying and, you know, like him or not. And um, but it, he's right. And it's frustrating that, you know, we're talking about this and he doesn't have a chance. You know, we I feel like he doesn't have a chance, but yet he is the the only hope, you know, at some kind of change. And like you say, he's really not talking about like, I'm going to we're going to go and like in, no. and take all your guns away. No, it's it's really it's pretty. These are pretty. Uh, Common sense. Comes, yeah. yeah. Raise uh, that age. Should be bipartisan. Yeah. Along those lines, um, last uh, Tuesday, and it's just stretched into Wednesday morning, we had uh, a Texas House hearing, uh, the only hearing we've had so far, and, and possibly the, the only one we'll have during this le legislative session on the issue of gun reform. And you had Uvalde parents there uh, waiting, I think, in some cases, like 13 hours or more. Um, Nancy, I know you were following this. I mean, this was an incredibly heart-wrenching day for for anybody who was watching this. I mean, what, what stood out to you? You know, that day... Um I thought I missed the the hearing and I really I want to follow it, but I just kind of figured I was going to look into it and see like this the recap. Right. Mm -hmm. And go back and watch the video. Um, so I was, you know, at home. It had been a long day at work. I, I was home and then I started looking around and start saying, oh, they haven't. They haven't had their chance just yet, been waiting, yeah. and they were waiting 13 hours. And um, so I stayed up, and I was exhausted, but I kept um, watching and listening, and I watched the live video, and so I started live tweeting it um, from the live stream, from the video stream. Um, and I was I was so exhausted, but I just kept thinking, these families have been there in person for 13 hours just to speak, and um, and they are there, and not only and they're obviously in deep mourning and grief and agony, right, still and dealing with this. And so if they can be there, I sure can from my house, right, stay up and watch it and just tweet a few um, remarks on it. And um, and so I did. And um, it was disheartening. Um, there were some details uh, shared that I had never heard about. Mm -hmm. And I've been to Uvalde several times myself. I have covered it since it's mm -hmm. happened. Um, one of the, the most, one of the, it was just really terrible, really awful um, details that was shared was that the, the shooter at one point um, with blood of children, right, and teachers on the whiteboard. So on one side of the whiteboard, there was like these, the couples. Mm -hmm. And so it was these, you know, kids, couples, and some of them that were murdered that day. And on the other side, and they had just written their names, the love birds or something. And on the other side, what he wrote in blood, LOL. And I just oh could God. not, I mean, just awful. And for those families to be there and to hear that. And then they got up and one by one, they started making their um, statements. And granted, I have heard and seen, you know, a lot at this point. Um, but to hear them have to do it again, they were obviously exhausted. Um, they shared um, some details, you know, and, and how it's gone since then. And, and they're begging, they're begging for some kind of change. And the fact that no action was taken, right, on um, on this HB 2744, um, no action was taken on this common sense gun reform is just a slap in the face. And, and it's just, um, it is disheartening. It's depressing that they can't get it. And there still hasn't been a hearing on it, you know. And on Twitter, they keep sharing. They keep saying, please share this. Please share this. You know, we gave, we waited 13 hours to give this testimony. And we shared more details. And please ask help us ask for a hearing just i was just struck by just the the, the, the shabby treatment vote. of those parents which yeah. just seems to continue yeah. um and hb 2744 would raise the age for, right. for purchase of semi-automatic rifles from 18 to 21 again you know this is i think this is there i think there's broad support for this if you if you actually talk to people about it I think there are even some gun owners who, who would who'd feel that way. Um, and I think the parents, I mean, one of the, the things that, that came through to me is they were saying, well, you know, this, you can't, this, this would have saved my child and it's too late now, but let's, let's, let's have their legacy mean something. Let's have their, that's to honor their memory. Yes. Um, and it just, I just don't think that it's really being taken seriously at all by 
right? Yeah. No, that was a hearing. I misspoke earlier. That was a hearing. What they want is a vote. Yeah. And a vote hasn't yeah. happened. And it may not happen, you know, and for it just to die, um, it's just, it's depressing. Um, you do have some people since then, some of the representatives saying, you know, that they are trying to work for it. And, and some of the reasons that they gave for, uh, for, for the families waiting 13 hours is that they're trying to get some of the other bills aside and, and then it just took too long. And, um, and I don't think they feel good about that part, mm -hmm. but I also think they could have, they could have made some changes. And not have those families wait so long. Right. Yeah. And I mean, so you had this kind of overwhelming uh, kind of moral force slamming into this committee. I mean, the family's uh, testimony was just really powerful. And I mean, it's it's hitting against the political reality that this is almost, you know, it's very unlikely to happen. I'm sure there are a lot of Republican lawmakers in the House who just don't want to vote on it. They don't yeah. want to have to take a position. They don't yeah. want to be on record saying no to to what is a pretty common sense reform that they know they're going to oppose. They don't want to put it put it down. I'm sure they wanted to die in committee. Yeah. yeah. They actually had some NRA uh, representatives there and some gun, you know, some pro gun uh, people up there testifying as well. So it wasn't only the families, mm -hmm. and so they were giving their testimony. And a few of the, actually, one of the reps, um, she said, "Well, you know, basically, this is disrespectful for you to come up here and to give your testimony to mm -hmm. with these families in the room like this." And then they said, "Well, that's our right," kind of thing. And and then so that became a controversy a little bit there. Um, but it, it was pretty disrespectful. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. They obviously are winning here. Yeah. I mean, I think it's also worth noting that Tracy King is the, the author of this mm -hmm. bill. Yeah. And he's, you know, the, he's a rep for Uvalde. He is, he's a conservative Democrat, mm -hmm. which I didn't think they existed anymore. But pretty he, rare. Yeah, yeah like he, he might be. He's been one very of, quiet throughout this. He yeah. has, he has. And, you know, he, he said last week, it's like, look, a year ago, I would not, you know, I, mm -hmm. I would have really seriously questioned and probably opposed a measure like this, but but the Rob Elementary school shooting changed everything for him. Yeah. So I mean, I think I think it's worth noting that it turned at least one yeah. really conservative gun, gun rights lawmaker. The capacity yeah. to change and the openness to change is something that we could use more of. I think in our in our politics, absolutely. Just a little compromise on yeah. It, you know. um, for our last uh, subject of the day, I wanted to talk about um, some of what we're seeing in the, in, in the as far as a citywide mailers that are that are going out there and of course the, the big issue is is prop a um which you know which would decriminalize abortion marijuana would would uh uh ex expand the city site and release program and there's you know a, a, there are a lot of packs that are uh, in opposition to it a couple of that uh, well th we got one up here if for those of you watching the video of it and uh we've got uh I don't know what this person. This is a person who's stealing something. I don't. I cannot make out what they're, what they're taking. It doesn't look like it's anything valuable. But uh, it's person in the both both of the ones that I brought in today. We we have uh, uh, guys with facial hair. One this this one has a, a, a ball cap on backwards. The other one has a hoodie. Um, and this one, you know, regardless of where you stand in Prop A, I I I do think that this is. Um, Deceptive in, in in the messaging here. It says Prop A decriminalizes shoplifting up to seven hundred fifty uh, dollars per incident. Um, the you know prop uh, shoplifting up to that to, to seven hundred fifty dollars would be a class B. It, it is currently a, a class B misdemeanor. It would remain a class B misdemeanor. It this would not decriminalize it. It would mean that you would get a ticket instead of uh, being arrested. You'd still have to meet. Uh, you'd have an appointment that you'd have to that you'd have to keep later. And if you didn't, you could possibly be arrested. So um, it says they get a verbal warning. Either they actually do get a citation. Um, so um, again, I think there are there there are. I understand the concerns out there about, about the crime and about the effects that Prop A could have on it, but I think that this one, uh, which is from Protect SA PAC, has I think there um, there's some exaggeration going on. Uh, we also got one here from um, this is from the uh, San Antonio Safe uh, Safe PAC, and this one um, has the guy with the, the with the has the guy with the, the the hoodie, and he's he's. Getting into a car and he's taking somebody's purse, which is that's terrible. That's just you not. Should, yeah, you know, you yeah. Not I'm, I'm against not, this. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go on record <laughs> and say I, I, I oppose this. <laughs> <laughs> and then here we have. I mean, I don't know. If it's the same dude, but he's he's uh, could be, but he's like, this is bad. He's he's trying to grab a woman's purse here. So, 
Yeah. So this is a it, theft is obviously the big thing. We've said I think many times that the 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 pro prop A case is has to do with abortion and marijuana. People are like, yeah, decriminal. I think there's support for decriminalizing those. The the anti prop A case, it's all. It's yeah, all I mean, I was gonna say, it's, like, as far as theft. imagery goes, I think it's a lot easier to oppose prop A than it is to to support it. Yeah. I mean, hard hard to come up with a visual. For <laughs> yes, yeah, so, somebody smoking it. a joint. Right, yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I went to look a little bit at, at Mayor Nuremberg's. Uh, we all I mean, know. How many scrapbooks of these do you have? Because I assume uh, you keep, you probably <laughs> save everyone. You're embarrassing me here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just have a pile, actually. <laughs> I just, and I, I, from, from, uh, yeah, and it's, it's kind of embarrassing. But um, this is a uh, couple from, from Mayor Nuremberg. And he's really uh, pushing, you know, uh, public safety. Uh, you know, we know the, that crime numbers have been up in San Antonio. When he ran uh, and first got elected in 2017 against uh uh, Ivy Taylor, I think he was he was making the argument, hey, crime's gone up. It's on your watch. You have to bear responsibility. But he's he's kind of handling that issue by saying, you know, I've been really aggressive on on uh, on crime. He's taking ownership of the uh, hotspot policing. He's saying, you know, that's city. He he has a, a headline uh-huh. from the San Antonio report saying city rolls out violent crime reduction plan. Um, and yeah, so more police officers and everything. So we got that. Um, and then the other one that I that I brought in uh, is. Low property taxes, <laughs> getting your taxes down, getting your your CPS and, and your saws built down, and we got a carton of, of eggs. You right. all know that eggs have gone <laughs> so, up. Right. So, yeah, yeah, this is so uh, that's so that's his. Uh, okay, <laughs> this is his response to the increase in the crime rate. That's his response to, to the inflation. <laughs> right. That's yeah. Right. With that one, uh, it's kind of funny because you're talking about just some marginal, very marginal things. I mean, no, nobody, you know, the fifty million dollar give back for CPS bills. I mean, what did that total per person? I mean. That wasn't a lot. Yeah. yeah, just a tiny bit. Bought you some eggs, though. Right, yeah, but yeah, you can, you can buy some eggs with it. Okay, um, so imagine what we can buy with a few extra dollars in our pockets. And so that's that's the message there. And um, and it's telling, I think, that the the uh, the opponent that he has, I mean, we all, we all know that the mayor is almost certain to get elected, reelected, but um, I think the, the opponent who, who's, I think, had the, the, the biggest presence um, as far as, uh, you know, signs and, and, and mailers and so on is uh, Chris Schuhart. And uh, he's he's saying pro and pro police, pro growth, pro prosperity for you. He's pointing out that uh, uh, you know violent crime has gone up under me. He's you know under Mayor Nuremberg. Can you see all that? And so um, so Mary, clearly the the mayor's uh, messaging is kind of anticipated that this would be this would be used against him. Um, and I. It, I think Greg. I think you were the one pointing this out, or was it? The, I don't know no, no, yeah. The, 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 the pink is the pink. new. It is our new. Campaign I am fascinated by that. Color, yeah. I am I'm almost it. embarrassingly <laughs> fascinated by Real the fact men wear pink, you that know, both that. Mark White. <laughs> and, and, yeah, right. and one thing I want. The reason I brought in Mark White. I live in District Ten, so I, I got this. But also, Mark White is. You know, is a, I think he would uh, define himself as a conservative Republican, even though this is not a, a partisan. Uh, election. Um, and if you look at the messaging with the uh, Nuremberg yeah, and, and Mark White's pretty much the same thing. Pros- mm-hmm. Prosperity, low taxes, get more cops on the street. But also they're both wearing pink. <laughs> and so that's, <laughs> you know, there's, there's a it's trend like, happening in San Antonio like politics. Like, Take crime. note, man. Take note. But we like <laughs> Okay. We like so I don't, I don't like to brag on our podcast, but I really don't think anybody else locally has 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 uh, you know talked about the fact that pink is, is kind of happening in 2023 <laughs> right. in San Antonio politics. We so always break ground. On we this break ground. This yeah, so um, didn't Jalen wear pink in his rap video? Oh, I think he wore he? pink and pink shoes too. I believe. I think he did. I think. It was and we got to talk about that video too. <laughs> yeah. What video are you okay, talking there about? Is, <laughs> that one, I, don't video? See, I don't see any pink. No, not yet. But no, I, I do think it, yeah, he wore pink at some point. Because, yeah, there's some multiple costume changes. We're also going to have uh, <laughs> his uh, council ally, Terry Castillo, she makes a, a cameo here. Yes. Wearing <laughs> boxing gl- she wears boxing gloves, and he end, refers yeah. to her as the people's champ. Yeah. Which uh-huh. is, yeah. <laughs> um, All right, Gilbert, so um, I'm not a musician. You are. So... I want to hear what you think of his his rapping. Style. I think he's got some. I think he's got some good flow there. There There's she Castillo. is. <laughs> uh, no, I think he does. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, I I, I I thought he he acquitted himself well. Um, one of the I mean, what, what stood out to me about his. I was, trying, I was trying to think. I want to know if he wrote it himself. I, I think he did. I think he did. I totally yeah. think he did. Um, 
Which, you know, he's a former teacher, as you know, and um, teachers sometimes have to do this cool stuff. When I was a teacher, I was not this cool. But I would find other people's videos who were more talented than me. There's the pink shoes. Okay, okay. That was <laughs> I a good know catch. I didn't imagine them. <laughs> okay, so we, we've, there is, it is now officially a trend in go. San Antonio politics. <laughs> okay, I think with the beginning of the, of the song, he starts with, uh, got extra funding for streets. If I'm winning, D2 about to eat. So, okay, so that's, you, you know, so he you know, he, 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 he connects his winning with uh, D, D2 uh, winning. So, yeah. I don't know. How's this going to play, you think? I know we're not listening to it. We're only watching it. Yeah. I, I actually think it's, um, I think it's well done. And it got a lot of attention on Twitter on the first day when he released it last week. Um, you know, and that was on Twitter alone. And, you know, you think what you want about Twitter, which I still have my blue check and I don't know how. <laughs> but I did yeah, not I pay lost, for it. I, lost mine the first I just want to know. So. I mean, I, I didn't pay for it. I still have it for, for now. We'll see. Um, but I think that it's it's important because it gets attention of young people, too. Yeah. And um, and they can relate to it. And, you know, maybe those young people will throw away flyers. It's consistent with his you know, personality, too. I is. mean, he was somebody he was the he was the Santiago Roadrunners mascot when he was the uh, UTSA. I mean, this is, you know, he's he's from the very beginning. He sort of brought a sense of of, of fun to what he what he does in his campaigning. Yeah. I mean, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I mean, to me, I, I watched it. It's it's kind of funny. I mean, it's it's yeah. it, it's a it's a cute video. Like, does it serve any, like, real campaign ends? No, probably not. But, I mean, he probably just said, you know what would be fun? Let's do a rap video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, it, and it could go wrong for many candidates. I mean, the fact that he could pull it up, yeah. because it, it, could, it could be the kind of thing that could, you know, it could end. Yeah. I mean, it could have ended Ted Cruz's career, for example, if he had tried something similar. <laughs> oh, there's not a lot of politicians who can do this. Yeah. But... Um, <laughs> So anyway, we just uh, want to encourage everybody to get out to vote, and uh, we thank you all for listening, and we'll be back next week. Take care.